It's whenever the spotlight's on us. And it's just embarrassing. Like, there's no reason for guys my age to be confident about this game because we've right. always, always, always crapped our pants in this scenario. No, you're right. I mean, like, there's some some night games that I can think of. Um, you know, some Thursday night games maybe, like at a Virginia Tech – a couple years okay. ago with Duke Johnson, uh, where he had that, you know, that that route uh, that he, he yeah. turned back on the uh, linebacker. Uh, zero yeah, dark Thursday right. at North Carolina uh, that one time, uh, yeah. you know, with the blocked field goal right before the half and, uh, you know, right. just coming back. So yeah. that's a Thursday night win. There's another couple, you know, Thursday and Friday night wins uh, and everything. But like, you know, yes, yeah, so Saturday night, 8 p.m. ABC National. Yeah. Nah, that's I mean, what you said is pretty much the list. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I really, yeah, I really can't uh, think of any other. I, I remember a Thursday night game. I think it was against Cincinnati when we were at home and we lost. Or I don't know if that was a Thursday night game, but it was a Thursday night on the road in Cincinnati when I wrote the the best, one of the best, my favorite pieces ever. I think it was literally, was it sixteen words? I want to say for the recap. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that night because I was just like I'm not going to invest this mental energy to like sit here and like write a recap we lost yeah. it sucked you saw it we'll talk later bye uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's perfect that's <laughs> perfect okay so Christian Williams is in the transfer portal and um, Jordan actually you, you you asked us to our last guest and I thought it was yeah. really great why don't you go ahead with this yeah so I'm kind of freaking out I am I am one of the fans that like I, I'm a long term fan you know like like you know i i'm the the kind of guy that geeks out like making nba rosters as a general manager so i'm i'm right. looking at the salary cap i'm planning four years ahead when certain contracts are coming off the books like that's how i think about roster management okay. um i'm kind of already in panic mode when it comes to recruiting corners because we have 21 of 24 spots already committed in this class we only have five scholarship cornerbacks right now only three of them have game experience um and ivy and to Corey couch really are not solid in a starting role neither of them are I, I i'm waiting for one of those guys to really step up and you know take command of that spot opposite blades um like how are we gonna fix this this roster you know like we only have five guys um five guys under scholarship we have two committed both guys, uh, our last guest referred to as projects, Tim Burns and Malik Curtis. Um, yeah. I am very worried about where we go from here. I mean, we're going to have to dip into next year's scholarship pool um, if there's not a rule change because, I mean, we still got to get a quarterback. We're leaving spots open for, you know, big game, big name guys like uh, Ja'Cory Brooks. Um, is that his He's name? He's not coming. He's not He's coming. He's not coming? No. Okay. Yeah, we had someone tell us that there could be a chance, but – um, but you know, who, who knows, but, but we're, we're leaving spots open for certain guys, you know, Tyreek Sapp, Jalen hood, um, like who knows? Well, and see the thing, the thing about leaving spots open is for guys of that caliber, you're going to figure it out. You know, if Ja'Cory Brooks does change his mind and he wants to come to Miami, then you're going to have to make a hard phone call to somebody else and say, son, maybe you need to red shirt, gray shirt, whatever yeah, it is, but like not coming. everybody's all American wants to be here. So yeah. You, I mean, that's where that comes from. In terms of the number of management in the class, you're really only holding open a spot for a quarterback right now. Yeah. Because everybody else is best available or upgrade on who's in the on in the class. And again, you can figure out ways to move things around because Jason Marshall says he wants to come to Miami hypothetically, right? Yeah. You're not gonna say. I have two cornerbacks committed and I had this uh, scholarship slot allocated elsewhere. No, 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 no. Yes, Jason. Thank you very much. Cool. Yeah. And then you go back into the war room. You go back with the coaches and say, OK, now what do we got to do and who we got to move or who we got to talk to? So that's kind yeah. of the way that I look at it. Now, in terms of addressing the elephant in the room, which is the dearth of talent at cornerback, the only way that you're going to get to where you want to be is by throwing numbers at the problem. OK, yeah. so you try to do that with two and two in the last two years okay, uh, of cornerback. So you had Christian Williams and Corey Couch last year. You had, uh, you know, a couple coming in this year and, you know, you try to stack them on top of each other. Right. Yeah. Obviously, for whatever reason, the Christian Williams get did not help address the issue. 
Yeah. He wasn't a fit. He didn't work. I, I don't know. But you're talking you have coaches talking about what happens on Green Tree is what earns you on the field, which is to me saying there was some work that needed to be done over on that side and it didn't get done and it wasn't to the level of standard of excellence that needs to be, especially on this defense, which has been championship caliber for years. Yeah. So now he decided to leave out. There's no other option but putting numbers there. Yeah. And yes, I believe I agree. Malik Curtis and Tim Burns, in terms of being college-level cornerbacks, are developmental players who are going to take a mango season or two before they're game ready. I personally still believe that Malik Curtis should play offense, but I've been saying that since the first time I looked at his film, and it looked like he was running in fast forward when everybody else was in slow motion. But hey, yeah. maybe that's just me. Either way, you still got to find a way to put numbers at that problem. So if you got to short another position, if you say, hey, look, Maybe one of them linebackers, you can say, okay, can we gray shirt for a year? Can you take a time off or whatever? Or somebody else at another position so I can get three or maybe four in this class? Cool. Yeah. But the thing for me also is it is past time that we have a real conversation about Mike Rump and recruiting. Because we've yep. written it at State of the U. I forget if it was Marsh or somebody else. Every year he's been here, there's been a late cycle ad right before National Signing Day, whether it was – um Javante Dean, whether it was Isaiah Dunson, whether it was Christian Williams before he and he just transferred out whomever every single year. There's been a guy that we get late to kind of help boost the position group to where it was. But we need to start talking about why are we going shopping late? Because we're missing exactly. on everybody early. We're looking for alternate options because though number one, two, three, four, five, six options yeah. in every class are going elsewhere. Yeah. That has to be the point of conversation. And if your job is supposed to be both talent acquisition and player development, okay, you have to do both. And yeah. you're, Mike Rump is getting by with the skin of his teeth in the terms of player acquisition by getting somebody late. Now you got these guys leaving too. And if we're looking at DJ Ivy, and I hate to keep throwing him under the bus, but you got to play better, buddy. So now your player development is starting to lack too. Why am I keeping you around? If you cannot get the players that yeah. we need, nor can you develop the players that we have to be the level that we need. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. I mean, you're, you're, you're bringing, I, I love the points that you're making because this is what specifically, I mean, Jordan has, as you're, you're talking Jordan's language and, and I completely agree with what you're saying. I want to ask you one more recruiting question. How is it that we can get these safeties like Avante Williams, James Williams, Jalen Harrell, but not that same level at cornerback. I mean, you got to look at you got to look at what we're doing uh, recruiting wise. And I know that there's some people going to say, OK, Bonda recruits everybody in the defensive backfield. So then you got to if 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 Bonda is recruiting corners and safeties. It's been demonstrated over time that the cornerback part of that recruiting is not to the standard. So take him off of that and put somebody else. Now, if it is Mike Rumpf, who's not recruiting corners, why are you not recruiting your own position, first of all? Yeah. And secondly, then get out there and get the job done. Now, if it is yeah. Mike Rumpf, then again, the cornerback recruiting is not to the standard. So, like, you have a first-round NFL draft pick in Mike Rump, who won a national championship here, was a first-round NFL draft pick, you know, and I believe played in the Super Bowl, I want to say. Um and he's put guys into the league, you know, help develop guys, you know, when they're cross training and even at cornerback. But that's not connecting enough. That's not getting the job done. So then we need to find somebody that can do it, you know. And look, all these guys who are going elsewhere, they're household names. And yeah. they go from high school being household names. And they become household names at the college level. And then they become top three round draft picks, except for Tarvis McFadden because he was undrafted because, well, he was boxing the hips and not that good. But – I mean, everybody else, it's not like they're going elsewhere and then flaming out. You know what yeah. I mean? It's not like a running back going to Timbuktu University and being like, damn, I should have went to Miami. No, nah, they're going other yeah. places. They're still becoming superstars. So if the path that way forward is clear for them, why would they deviate to go to yeah. Miami? And I don't think that whomever is recruiting cornerbacks is giving them an appropriate reason to stick around whereas at safety uh i think that the opposite is true yeah well i i heard a point i th it, it would have been over a year ago probably and i think it was the orange bull boys that made this point i could be wrong there though it goes along with what you're saying and it's no matter who is doing the recording recruiting for cornerbacks at the end of the day 
they come on campus and they meet who their position coach is going to be. Like you can't hide Mike Rumpf forever. You know what I mean? Right. Eventually these kids are going to have interactions with Mike Rumpf and decide if they want to play for him or not. And, and you have to think that that's important. Um, so, I mean, like you said, we, we really just need to assess this overall situation and, you know, why are we missing the guys like Jason Marshall? Why is it that we look like the kid who got, you know, the the only kid who didn't end up with a prom date? That's kind of how we are in recruiting cornerbacks every single cycle. And mm-hmm. it's just, it's killing me, man. And, and you know, we, we had a guy, he was on our podcast, Stephen Ortiz. You know, he, he has South yeah. Florida ties. He's committed to Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Great young player, highly ranked. Uh, I think he's the 14th ranked quarter, corner in the country in this recruiting class. The kid was all but begging for a Miami offer. Grew up a Miami fan, wearing Miami, uh, you know, like clothing and the logo to his high school in Arizona. Um, even while we're disrespecting him by not offering him, not giving him any love. And he's he's like showing love. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, I know for a fact that he got one phone call from Mike Rumpf. That's it. Well, and, you know, the thing about it is you have to make tough choices in recruiting. You do. We've talked about it a million times. Everybody's spoken about it. There's, a, you know, infinite number of players who are Miami caliber in South Florida every year, but you can only take 25 in a recruiting class. So there's going to be guys who, for whatever reason, I mean, if you look in this class, you'll Keith Brown. That's a name that people keep bringing up. Which wide receiver are you going to drop for you'll Keith Brown? Because for me, I'm not going to drop any of them. But could, could he play at Miami and be good at Miami? Absolutely. We just don't have room. You know what I mean? And maybe that's what happened with the Ortiz kid. You say, okay, we're going to allocate those resources elsewhere. Um, maybe it's once bitten, twice shy. Uh, uh, you know, um, John Richt and Mark Richt spending all of that time and all of those uh, man hours on that private jet going up to Oregon to try to recruit Michael Johnson Jr. only for to see him go somewhere else. So I say, okay, we're not going to go to the West Coast like that. You know, we're going to find a, a Keyshawn Smith late yeah. who's like, yes, I want to be in. I can be there literally tomorrow kind yeah. of a thing versus, okay, I'm going to recruit this kid. I'm going to go out to the game. I got to fly out there when I could spend, you know, half of the money, half of the time and see, you know, it, you know, whatever percentage of four stars and five stars in the Southeast, I can see, you know, I can see 12 players in a weekend by going to four games in South Florida, as opposed to, you know, flying out West for that one kid. And maybe that was a cost benefit analysis that was done. But the thing about it is if you're not going to get those other guys, if you don't do the work to secure that commitment, then what, then like you're you're cutting off your nose to spite your face because you're saying, okay, cool, there's this four-star kid who could play here. He's an all-American level talent. He's a blue-chip recruit, and he wants to be here or wants to at least be connected in the recruiting process, and we're electing go elsewhere. I mean, that's all well and good, but if you don't get any of those guys that you're recruiting instead of him, then we you have to question the decision-making process as well. So, I mean, there's, there's a lot going on, and it's not easy, but, like, the result just has to be better. And Agreed. If, if you know, we're talking – during the Al Golden era about defense. And we said defense has to be better. You know, whatever the chapter and verse is, come hell or high water, what we're seeing is not good enough and it has to be better. Mark Rick comes in, bring in Manny Diaz, we change the defense, boom. Now during the Mark Rick era, and even up to last year, we're saying, look, the offense is the thing that has to be better. And moves were made eventually across those two regimes to try to address that. But in terms of recruiting cornerbacks specifically, everybody can clearly see We do not have the kind of players or the amount of players on this roster that we need. So the job of recruiting is not being done to the level it needs to be done, but the change has not been made. And that's the frustrating part. Agreed. I I completely agree. And, you know, I feel like like this was an issue because I remember back in February, I was freaking out about this. I was talking about this on the fours up podcast. It was it was probably coinciding with Trajan Bandy declaring early. Um, when I started freaking out and I'm like, holy crap, we have a huge problem at corner, you know, and then it died down and now it's back up again because we're seeing some roster movement at that spot. It's not, it's not like it was good at any point this off season. Like the, you know, this was a huge red flag going into the, into this year. And now it's only getting worse. And I just don't even know what to do, man. But, but you're right. I mean, we need to see a change there. Um, you know, and, and like you said, it doesn't matter if it's Rumpf or somebody else. 
we, you know, the guys on the inside need to address this problem and own up to the fact that we are in a very 